Let us divide the uh, trees into the parts. F each tree has a axial line. You see green line for the proximal fragment, pink line for the distal. At its end they have yellow points for borders of bone fragments. Also each of the tree have two, has two horizontal lines. They can be oblique, you can place them oblique. So uh, also the uh, second line or so-called second centrator of each tree has a blue angle. About the blue angles we will speak a little bit later. So also each tree has six red points and in the horizontal lines and in the middle of these lines. They are used to make the center of bone fragments and also they have only one uh, each of three, the trees has uh, one uh, red ball in the end of the uh, line connecting with the yellow point. So, one more time, each tree has axial line, it has first centrator, so-called horizontal line, second centrator, which also has blue angle, and also they have yellow point marking the border of bone fragment and red point which uh, connected which which connected with the yellow point by horizontal line so you see the uh, pink tree has the same so how we uh, draw the anatomic axis how we mark it over the di in diaphyseal deformity we can mark it by placing the red points on the borders of uh, on the cortices of bone fragment you see it was for the femur, distal femur, and here you see for the uh, for the tibial bone and uh, the yellow point is usually placed on the border of the bone fragment when we have no gap between bone fragments. You see the same you do on the lateral view. So how to make the excess of the bone fragment? It's to place the red points on the borders of bone fragments. Now we'll uh, show you a few examples. One of them is diaphyseal valgus and uh, recurvature deformity of the tibial bone. So first we mark the basic fragment market, so-called green tree, and uh, its diaphyseal deformity and it has no gap between bone fragments, only osteotomy. So we align the red points with the cortices of the proximal fragment. It's possible to make the uh, centrator oblique because uh, you see the main aim is to find the middle line the axis of the uh, bone fragment uh, so called its anatomical uh, axis and you see by the red point connected with the yellow point we try to mark the uh, the uh, end the distal end of the proximal bone fragment now we make this procedure very precise and it's better to make it on good magnification, big magnification. Then we check the uh, box uh, mobile fragment marker and draw from up to down the uh, pink tree. And now we align the uh, red points of the centrators of the pink tree with the cortices of the bone. It's necessary to do it very accurately. Uh, because we have to find very accurate uh, anatomical axis of the uh, distal bone fragment as well as very accurate must be for the proximal. So now we align the red points with the cortices the of, uh, of the bone fragment and also we try to mark by yellow point the proximal and the proximal border of the distal fragment. You see, we have no gap in this case, that's why we mark by yellow points only the uh, ends, the borders of the fragments. The same procedure we do for the lateral view. You see, we check the uh, box basic fragment marker for lateral view and now we uh, align the red points of the second centrator. It's possible to do it for first and second in different uh, time you can it's there is no special order you see first we made for second and now we do for the first and then we'll get back to the second it's possible to do also we mark the border the distal border of the proximal fragment by yellow point which connected with the red 
The same procedure we do with the pink tree. You see here the bone is a little bit curved, so we go lower, more distally, and we align the uh, red points of the second centrator. You see it's possible to do it oblique, not perpendicular to the axis. The same with procedure we do for the first centrator. Sometimes it's better to make bigger magnification in such cases. Now you see everything is aligned. The last step is yellow point on the border of, dis of the distal fragment on proximal border. Of now we can press button forward and go to the next step. One more example. In this case we have a gap between bone fragments. The first steps are the same as in previous example. You see we mark the uh, we point at the we check the box uh, basic fragment marker and we try to align the green tree. So we have to 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 put the uh, red points of the centrators to the borders of to the cortices of bone fragments. Uh, and uh, we have to put the yellow point on we, we have to put it on the border on the distal border of the proximal fragment you see we try to do it very accurately we try to find the center of this line this the center of the bone fragments you see we have to we can do we can enlarge we can make bigger magnification to see the cortices better. And you see the yellow point is at the border of the proximal fragment. Then we make the same procedure with the with the distal fragment marker, with the mobile fragment marker, with the pink tree. But there will be one difference how we set the uh, marker. The uh, uh, We try first, of course, we do the uh, uh, red points, we align the red points with the borders of the distal fragment so to have a good axis of distal fragment. If it's necessary, make bigger magnification as well. Now the difference with the previous case. In the previous case we had no gap. In this case we have a gap. So when we have a gap, the gap we have to place the yellow points of the uh, markers at the same level, at the same horizontal level. So we uh, aligned the yellow point of the distal marker with the yellow point of the green tree. You see the yellow points are at the same horizontal level. The same procedure we make for the lateral view. We also we draw the bone fragment marker and we align the red points with the cortices of the proximal bone fragments and we don't forget about the yellow point the yellow point of the proximal fragment we place uh, on the border of the proximal on the distal border of the proximal fragment and uh, the yellow point of the pink tree of the uh, distal fragment marker we place on the same horizontal level with the yellow point of the proximal tree. So you see in this case we mark, we make bigger magnification, we mark the borders by red points, so by this way we receive good middle line, good anatomical line, and now we mark the, we make the pink tree, we place the red points as well on the cortices of the distal fragment it's necessary for us to see the borders of the fragment otherwise the the middle uh, the mid diaphyseal line will be not accurate and now we have to place the yellow point on the same level with the yellow point of the proximal tree of the green tree so you see the yellow points are on the same level this is the difference when we make deformity correction when we have a gap
Soon as we have uh, set all the trees, we have to click the red points of all the trees, otherwise the software will not lead, uh, let us go further. One more example. You see the case of femoral deformity after lengthening, and now we have to make deformity correction, so we make step number 10. We check the box basic fragment marker, and we align the green tree of the proximal fragment. So we find the uh, place on the bone where is necessary to where is possible to place the red points of the centrators. We can enlarge. We can make bigger magnification to see the cortices of the bone, and we align the red points of both of the centrators. It's necessary to make it very accurately to be sure that our axial line is proper anatomical line of the bone. And the last we do while making the green tree, we mark the uh, border, the distal border of the proximal fragment by yellow point. You see now the axis of the bone is made proper and we can go to the uh, pink tree, to the distal fragment. First we draw it from up to down as well. And now we have to line the uh, centrators. If it's necessary we make magnification. And now we have to align the red points of the centrators very precisely to have good anatomical axis of the distal fragment. It's possible to place the centrators oblique as I told you. And now we have to mark the uh, yellow point place. You remember it must be at the same level with the yellow point of the green tree, so it must be on the same horizontal level, on the same line, because here we have also a gap. When we have no gap, the yellow point ma points must mark the borders of the fragments. When we have a gap, the yellow points must be placed at the same levels, both trees, of both trees. Now we do the same procedure on lateral X-ray film. We mark the uh, green tree and we align the uh, red points of both of the centrators. And then we mark the uh, end of the proximal, distal end of the proximal fragment by a yellow tree and you see we try to do everything very precisely to have good anatomical axis of the proximal fragment the same procedure for the distal fragment we mark it by the pink tree as well we align the uh, red points of both of the centrators. You see, it's possible to place the centrator very oblique. It uh, it's possible, and uh, even we do it in a very oblique way. But when we mark the uh, cortices, the both cortices, we by red points of the centrator, we have its center. And you see, we have placed the yellow point at the same level as well on both of the X-ray films. And now we can go forward. But you see, we have made a mistake. We did not check the uh, red points at all the trees. And the software shows us click the pointers. So we click the pointers of both of the trees at each view. And after it, we can go forward and the software allows us making it.